from Vermont. Mr. President, I have five requests for committees to meet during today's session of the Senate. They have the approval of the majority and minority leaders. Duly noted. Mr. President, uh, others have spoken about this, but it's imperative that we take up and pass H.R. 6617. That's the Further Additional Extending Government Funding Act. Of course, we call it the CR. I say this because the bill will keep the federal government funded and fully operating through March 11, while we work out and are working out the details of full-year appropriations bills to meet the needs of the American people. And I want to compliment the Appropriations Committee staff that has been meeting with me and others weekends, evenings, for weeks now, months actually, to get this done. In a few moments, we'll vote to, we'll vote to invoke cloture in the motion to proceed to the continuing resolution. As chairman of the Appropriations Committee, I strongly urge all members, Republicans and Democrats alike, to vote aye. A government shutdown would be useless, senseless. Imagine how that looked to the Russians. I'm pleased to report that last week, the four corners of the Senate and House Appropriations Committee reached a framework agreement that will allow us to negotiate an omnibus appropriations bill. And that framework was the result of weeks of careful negotiations between myself, Vice Chairman Shelby, Chair DeLauro, and Ranking Member Granger. And I want to thank them. I especially want to thank all their staffs who worked late nights and weekends that it took us to get to this point. I don't know how many nights I'd probably turn in about 11 o'clock at night and I was still getting emails from them working on this. Now, it's like any compromise. I've been here 48 years. I know you have to work these things out. I don't believe any of us walked away from these negotiations with everything we wanted. There's still much work to do. But on the good part, this framework sets the stage for us to make significant investments in the American people and communities across our country. It provides the biggest increase in non-defense programs in four years. Under this framework, we can direct new resources. We can improve health care in rural communities. We can expand the middle class. We can protect our national security. And we look forward to presenting our final agreement to members to review in the coming weeks. But by passing this continuing resolution, we remove the unnecessary threat <coughs> of yet another government shutdown and allow the Appropriations Committee to continue to work right through the upcoming recess. Because think of the alternative, a four-year continuing resolution, that's untenable. It's far too onerous on the American people. Our government is not meant to run on autopilot. An American taxpayer dollars should not be spent on outdated priorities. We have the responsibility to make the hard chase choices about how to invest in the American people. I'll give you an example. A four-year continuing resolution would freeze funding at the National Institutes of Health. Think what that does. Think what that does when it brings ground-breaking medical research to a halt at the time of a pandemic. It would once again pass on new investments that begin to acknowledge the climate crisis after four years of setting it on the back burner. Continuing resolution would fail to increase investments in the education of our nation's children or to build and renovate affordable housing or expand the middle class. It would also, and this people overlook, 
It would substantially reduce infrastructure spending that was in our bipartisan infrastructure law. We passed this bipartisan infrastructure law with an overwhelming vote, but we also have to fund it. A full year continuing resolution would lead to delays and, frankly, worse, a loss of service to veterans. Drafting full year appropriations bills allow us to make smart decisions about how to invest in each of these areas on behalf of the American people. In December, the Secretary of Defense warned that a full year CR would be unprecedented. It would cause irreparable damage for a wide range of bipartisan priorities from defense modernization to public health. Well, Secretary Austin is absolutely right. A four year continuing resolution would actually cut defense spending below last year's levels. Some programs would be underfunded. Others would be overfunded. And the Department of Defense would lack the transfer authority to correct the imbalance. You got the worst of all possible worlds. I'll give you an example. A continuing resolution would provide $3.3 billion to train and arm the Afghan security forces. If anybody's been watching the press, the Afghan security forces aren't there anymore. But a continuing resolution puts in $3.3 billion for them. As another example, the Department of Defense might have to lay off some of the men and women of the armed forces so they can afford 2.7% pay raise which they rightly deserve, went into effect last month. So we say, OK, here's the pay rate. Sorry, we've got to fire all of you to pay for it, because we have a continuing resolution. So in other words, the continuing resolution would be paying to train a military force that doesn't even exist anymore, while laying off our own troops and civilian workforce in order to pay them. It's. Uh, Well, my talking point said this does not make sense. It's actually baloney at, uh, to try to do this. You know, you fund the priorities of yesterday in the world of today would be irresponsible. It's no way to govern. Our Four Corners framework provides a path to reaching a bipartisan, bicameral, omnibus agreement by March 11th. Vice Chairman Shelby, Chair DeLaurel, Ranking Member Granger, and I are committed to completing this work. We and our staffs are willing to work straight through until that day. So I urge members to support the continuing resolution to pass the House with strong bipartisan, Republican and Democrats alike support so we can finish our negotiations. And I might say, uh, um, Mr. President, the continuing resolution and I was here at a time when something like this was simply passed by voice vote. But it has to pass in its current form. The House is out of session. We don't have time for a long, protracted debate. The government will shut down at midnight tomorrow if we do not send the continuing resolution in its current form to the president for a signature. So. I would urge all members to oppose any amendments, whether they come from Republicans or Democrats, oppose any amendments to the bill, vote yes on final passage. Be responsible. We have to be in tonight and tomorrow to finish it, fine. But let's get it done. Come on. It, uh, if you took a poll of American people, 95% of them would say, what's taking so long? Let's get it done. And I yield the floor. I suggest 